recording over this way. I need to pull it over there. Let me give you all a little bit of history in one set. <laughs> See it the first time in uh, Trinity, historic Trinity AME Church. Yeah. As a child, I attended this church beginning at the age of six and a half weeks old. Amen. All right. <sighs> Over here to the right was known as the Amen Corner. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sister Williams, when he's always preaching every Sunday, he said, you know one thing, I don't think y'all can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> but they may not be here physically, Come on. but they are here. Their spirits are over there. Yeah. Every time yeah. I sit over there, every Sunday morning, I just look at them. Come on. Yes, sir. I, I look at Bobby. Um, Burgess over there, her grandmother, I mean her mother, Miss Eileen Thompson. Yeah. Mary Millette, her mother, Miss Maddie Brown. Yeah. And don't forget, Miss uh, Minnie Lee Samuels, yeah. and my mom, Miss Ivy Kills. Okay? Yeah. Also, Miss Martha Jackson. Yeah. yeah. They were the missionaries, like the Reverend said. They are not here, but they're carrying us on to yeah. get to tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't need to, I thought first I didn't have to come because. I told my daughter, Cherie, I said, let's back up. Because Jean got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First of all, let us pray. Thank you, God, for allowing us to assemble one more time in your sanctuary. Oh, yes. You gave us strength to walk to the door. And we are going to get through the day. Today is a new day. Yes. It's a great day. It's yes. a day that we've never seen. Oh, yes. Thank you for our minister. Thank yes. you for our first lady. Yes. Thank you for our members and our officers and members of this great historic church. Yes. Thank you for our visitors. We thank you for Sister Jero. Yes. We thank you for all the people from our community. But Lord, stop by the nursing homes and the convalescent homes. They need your support, Lord. Yeah. They're weak, and they need you oh, yes, to provide yes. them some motivation just to move their fingers or either just be able to wiggle their toes. Yeah, yeah. Go inside the hospitals to the yeah. ones that are sick and bedridden. Yes, Lord. Not being selfish this morning. Sitting on the front seat, and she shocked me because the morning she said, Ma, I'm not going to be able to make it. Yeah. But she pulled the wool over my eye. My daughter, Cherie, is here. Thank you. Yeah. Sit yeah. right by me, yes. Lord. Thank please you. continue yeah. to bless her and to be able to let her continue going through her last episodes of chemo. Yeah. It's been a mighty long five years, but yeah. she's still here, Lord. Yeah. One more, Thank Lord. You. Please stop by. Yeah. It's in Clinton, Maryland, my niece, Ebony's Kill Saunders, who's been sick and bedridden with the third stroke for the last eight and a half months. God, give her strength yes, to move her toes, wiggle her toes. Not to walk a mile, Lord, just to walk a few steps. Yeah. Lord, we know you're able. Yes, Lord. We know we are not patient. Yes. But we have to have the faith, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yes. Go with our missionaries, Lord, see yes, over there. Lord. Yeah. Yes. We might be few in the number, a few of us in number, mm -hmm. but we still keep on keeping on. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Yes. Lord. Just touch us. Yes, Lord. Touch our children who are stray out there. Yes, Lord. Are wondering because of alcoholism as well as drugs. Yes. Protect our men and women in the military serving around the world, yes. Lord. Lord, also touch the men and the women who are struggling through domestic violence. Yes, Sometimes, God, that can touch on. We yes. just don't know. Yes. We are asking you so many things, God, but this protect us, God. Yes. yes. These are all the prayers now that we ask you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah.
Now I didn't want to get uh, too long with it, but I felt that he yes. had yes. praying in here, but we never get enough praise. Yes. Yes. Again, that's my daughter right there, Shuri. My only daughter, Stalin, uh, ovarian cancer. She's here. She said, Mom, I'm not coming, but she surprised me. <laughs> and the other person back there is my classmate, <laughs> sitting in the back, Miss Greenhill Tawanda. I asked her yesterday. She said, she always called me Ma. She said, Ma, I'm coming. Oh. I said, you sure? And I pulled up. She was right there. Believe it or not, she was. Amen. But I had other people, yeah. several other people that wanted to come, but they had other obligations. Yeah. But I thank you all, especially the missionaries, for thinking of me and asking me to deliver your message this morning. Yeah. I thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to stay up here about two and a half hours to sit in your spot this morning. <laughs> First Lady, it's an honor and a privilege. Again, we go back to this church here. We downtown, but yes, we was always on the block and we'll continue being in the block. If only we only have three people in come here to worship us yes. on, on any Sunday morning. Amen. My theme is missionaries inspiring and empowering the future. First of all, when we think about a missionary, mm -hmm. a missionary is one sent to spread a religious faith among unbelievers or to engage in charitable work within religious support. Yeah. But we look at these ladies over here. To be a missionary, you got to have. You don't have to be pretty. Come on. You don't have to be rich. Yeah. Which, because you're working for God. That's right. Most of these women here, they uh, their characteristics consist of being uh, patient, yeah. charitable, faithfulness, compassion. But guess what? They devote so many hours, long hours, in the community trying to help people that are in need that are sick. Yes. But you know what it is? It's God that who they're working oh, for. Yeah. So you can't go out there and say, but Rose, what she's trying to do? Rose is doing what she's doing because she's working for God. Amen. And when you're working for God, man can't touch you. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Now we even all here, we're not selfish, the ones who are not African and Methodist Episcopal. But we want to let you know, we all are missionaries, yes. and we work together. Yes. Regardless yes. of who we are, yes. we are working together. Yes. But our denomination, we can talk about Richard Allen. Richard Allen was a slave. He was a minister. He also was an educator and a writer, yes. and one of the most prominent or dominant black leaders. And in 1794, he founded the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which stands for AME. And that is definitely something to be proud of, whether you are a AME, because he was black just like me and you. Yeah. The first independent black denomination in the United States. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty good, right, man? Yeah. He opened his AME church in 1794 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I need to hear some hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> also, why it was important? This was part of African American society because it was political, uh -huh. social, uh -huh. and a, a cultural place that was open to blacks and whites to provide Christians guidance, which is very important in any church. Yeah. But guess what? The Missionary Society of the AME Church uh -huh. stems from the year of 1816, which was also organized through the leadership of Richard Allen. But guess what? They said, always behind a man Great woman. All right. All right. Guess who that woman was? All they right. stood behind Richard Allen. Sarah Allen. Yeah, man. Sarah Allen was the first missionary of the 
AME Church. Her project was to, was to uh, take on the responsibilities of ministers through her husband. He sent them out to work in the fields, but some of them got ill. So what happened? He told them they had to, someone had to take care of them. So Sarah and her group of women in the church, she got together and they cared for them. Mm -hmm. They sewed their clothes and made sure, made sure they had decent meals to eat, hot meals. Yeah. So that's pretty good, isn't it, the missionaries? Amen. They, yeah, they're showing sisterhood right there. Amen. Amen. But guess what they were called then? Daughters of, 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 the, of Sarah. And they, like, was part of the conference then. Sarah, daughters of Sarah. But as time passed, it, more women started joining the organization. Yes. And what happened in 1944? It was then named the Missionary Society of the AME Church. But, now that this kind of like rubbing in, but we had some outstanding women that were very close and very, uh, did a lot of important work in the Bible. And one was Anna. Yes. Anna was a prophetess. According to Luke, she was one of the earliest missionaries. She was 84 years old, a widow, and witnessed Jesus' birth and opened up the news, spreading Jesus' redemption. It was a pretty good person. She had to have a lot of faith because they said, according to Luke 2, 36 through 38, they described her as a worshiping person. She worshiped day and night. Right, Lab? Amen. 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 She fast and prayed a lot. But when I think about Anna, I think about my mom, right, Sherry? Come on. The reason why I thought about I'm looking over there at Joanne, because that, in fact, they were with Miss Peggy and, Moses, and uh, Mia said, that was our seat. What happened? <laughs> my, mom, my mom was a praying person because her mom um, raised up he, her, it's like she raised us up in this church here. What happened? She was a humble person. Mm -hmm. You got to know her, Jean. Amen. Mary and Joanne's well as uh, Brittany Lee. She was an humble person because she was quiet. Yeah. You have to watch those people that are quiet. Yeah. <laughs> they are the ones, but they're quiet. They kind of like, they studying you. All right. Yeah. But the whole time, not only being one of her daughters, she was very humble, but she kept me in line. Yeah. Because when the amen group got up, and they started shouting, Miss Amelia. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. We were kids, like three, four years old, right, Mary? Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure out, and you had to sit on the pew right here because we mm -hmm. were singing on the choir. And my mom was, had that look in her eyes. She said, well, when those people get up, and they got, they doing their thing. Don't you open your mouth and you better not laugh. Cause we thought there was something wrong with them. What's wrong with these people jumping up and down? Asking the Lord and they in here. She said, that's between them and God. Yes, yes, you yes, respect yes. them. Yes. So I instilled those qualities because it wasn't until not too long ago, and I'm not gonna tell you all how long ago, when I actually was able to understand I actually feared him because going back a couple of weeks ago, months ago, I had a fire, house fire. And luckily, me and my brother wasn't there. We didn't stay there. The funniest thing, how did you stay there and your house on fire? That afternoon, I'd already told my daughter right there, I said, I'm not staying there tonight. I said, I don't know, something strange. But God came to me and said, do not stay. Right. He didn't stay. Because when it occurred, it occurred 118 and we were at um, the hotel. But I feared God because I said, well, God, I got the house fire. I'm going through this other dilemma in my life, God. I keep trying to get through it, but every time I look, I'm in mean, 
I'm praying to you, God. But you, I'm not, you're not answering me. <laughs> but you know what God said? Stop and wait on me. Amen. And with my, I'm looking at my pastor as I talk. I need to talk to him. And after going through this and that, and with the house fire, it took me a while. It didn't, it didn't settle. Like, it, it, it didn't um, make me, like, realize what I had to do. But when I started praying, and in that, in that, um, like my mama said in the prayer, in the, in the prayer room and in the prayer closet, yeah, I can't right. touch me. I don't care how people look at me, or yes. see me, because they too, yes, got to get right with God. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. yes sir. All right. Amen. Now we'll go on instead of you talking about your own business. Janet, move on. Okay. <laughs> Other missionaries in the Bible was one was Mary Magdalene. She was a great follower, and she was very faithful, and she witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. Another one was Priscilla. She's found in the books of Acts and Romans. She describes how, it describes how she preached along with her husband. The other one was Tabitha. In the book of Acts, she describes, it describes how she helped others and always giving of herself, missionaries, but when we, we go back and we think about prayer, prayer, oh prayer. Prayer is one of the central tools in our everyday life. It's not something that we put down and never pick up. Without it, we will crumble and fall. Prayer is just not asking for things that we want or desire or want. But it is about building a relationship with God. And building their uh, relationship with God, it, it, it doesn't happen within a few minutes. It's an ongoing process. You have to practice that every day. You're not going to say, well, you know, I prayed to God yesterday, bro. Uh, today is Sunday. I ain't going to worry about him until Wednesday. If you don't put it in place, you see the difference. Because you don't have to see him, you feel him. Yeah. We, as people, we pray. We pray for healing. We pray for protection. We pray for success. We also pray for courage. We even pray for our children, like I pray for my daughter just now and my niece. Amen. We pray for strength, forgiveness, and the sickness, prosperity, for power. But when we pray to God, we pray through faith and to trust him. Because if he doesn't trust us, you think Johnny or Mary, when you need some help, you can run to them, you can get help. But when you continue that faith in God, God is going to be there with nobody else. Amen. When, when we get word like I did, that word you, you remember. God is not there with you, physical or physical being. You get that Bible. And you read. And at night, I tell my daughter, two and three o'clock in the morning, what, what you doing up? I'm, I, I got the Bible. Because as a, as a child, the day is Sunday when we were growing up, my mom said, well, you go to church, you come back, you eat, you take your clothes off. Well, I'm going to so-and-so house. I'm, oh, no. We had to get the Bible <laughs> and read it. And when we got to a word that we didn't know how to pronounce, she used to break it down and say, and then you're going to think that you're going to get over on her. What she's going to do, she's going to ask you a question. So Sunday afternoons was no movies, nothing. We had, she, she raised us by the book. And I think that's a, 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 was a, a great honor. And I always remember that. Because that's something that you can still in, not only um, continue doing it as an adult, you can you pass it on through your children and your grandchildren. Because <clears throat> the Bible is fulfilling. That was her one of her words, my mama. The Bible is fulfilling. I said, what is that shit you use? 
you figure it out. It might, feel, you might, it might take you a while, but the Bible definitely is fulfilling. We never know when tragedies, tragedies or disasters, disasters may occur. You never know when someone's going to have, um, going to die, whether somebody's going to get sick, whether you're going to have a house fire, whether someone's going to come in there and, 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 and rob you. These are things that we have to connect through personal life. And they are unexpected situations which we have to put in place in a sense. <clears throat> but when we are in the dark, when the darkness comes in our lives, we read our Bible. Oh yes, two and three o'clock in the morning and motivate you. Yes, and you think you're talking to yourself, but no, you're not. God is there with you. You get on your knees and pray. My mama would say, you get on your knees and pray. Ask once you leave it and put it in God's hands, you got it. You don't worry about it. But one of the most important things in life now, we need communication, we need to learn how to communicate with God. And once we do this, you will see a change in our life. Yes, the fire, it took everything. But this man over on the left told me, said, you, you know, Janice, you lost everything. God got a plan for you. Amen. And I know he has a plan. Because when I'm speaking to you now, you and my children say, Mommy, something different about you. Yes, I'm different. You know why I'm different? Because I am a child of God. I need to understand my God. To be a stronger, strong believer in God, you must have, you must, like I said, read the Bible daily. You must pray. And something I haven't been doing, talk about yourself. Attending church regularly. Go, come attending Bible study. And also, stay, I, which I don't do. I don't do Facebook. That's what a lot of problems, the problem stands now with a lot of us. Social media and Facebook and whatever. But they, 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 my kids say, I'm so old fashioned. You know, I never had a Facebook page and I, I don't want one. My life is my private life. So I'm sorry. To each his own, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, the, wish, the missionary society in the AOB church is called WMS, right? Yes. Missionaries. Yes. The, their first responsibility is God. Mm -hmm. And then to the church and the, the mission agency. Through guidance, by doing this, they provide guidance, support, and resources by nurturing spiritual growth, especially in our youth. They encourage and strengthen other women's faith in Christ by serving and caring for one another. And this is where the sisterhood comes in. And also leading other women through fellowship. And this is a very important part of being a missionary. But the, uh, the missionary statement is to, to minister through spiritual, physical, intellectual, and emotional, as well as emotional, uh, environmental needs of all people by spreading Christ, uh, um, liberating gospel through the word and deed. Once you learn about God, you're able to tell it, and you're not going to be proud of it. I noticed I had a friend the other day told me he wanted to come. I said, I had a classmate, I want you to come. He said, no, I'll come. But I am saved. I wasn't saved and I found God. I try not to miss my services every day from church. He said, but I'm going to tell you, Janice, I knew you ever since my high school. Your voice is stronger and better and the day I saw you in Walmart about two weeks after you had the fire. You, when I was talking to you, like you was in a trance. It's like I was had, had to actually interpret what I was saying to you because you emotionally and still affected by the fire. But I told him, I'm good now. I'm like you, Ray. I'm on the path of learning about God. And I will. Yes, I'm um, guilty about not coming to church because of the dilemma that I was going through. I couldn't get it together, but I'm here. Amen. And I thank you all. Amen. I thank you. I thank you for your support. When I'm talking to you, you have
dad said, oh, I'm, doing, oh I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm a little slow, but they always say, tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. But I am thankful to, to be back. And I will continue to do my best. If you need me to do something, just come and ask me. And I'm not, right now I'm kind of long-winded, but I'm going to try to make some points here. Minister Williams. But according to Titus 2 and 3 through 5, women are encouraged to teach other women. They're teaching each other, sitting over there, doing, making um, plans to expand the missionary society throughout the AME Church. And they are all, we all are dedicated to pray. And that's according to 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. But the most important thing of the missionary, we have to make sure we don't leave the kids out. Because I am a part of Mary, right? <laughs> Freddie Lee, Joanne, going to the Sunday school conventions. Yes, we had people to motivate us. Yeah, we had more people. And what happened? They instilled so many qualities, and I'm very proud. Even though I ended up being part of, going to, this, to part of the um, AME supporting school, Allen University. Uh, even though telling the story, my, my mom told me, my sister, well, y'all got to go to Allen University. We said, no, big sisters, Arjun, right, Jean? Arjun Allison, everybody else is in DC, you want to go to Allen University. Mom said, you want to go to Allen University? Get the three jobs. Because it's two of y'all. I can't support you. But it was an honor and a, a pleasure to go to Allen University, our, one of our AME supporting schools. Under the leadership of the missionaries, YPDers of the AME Church received trainings and opportunities uh, for leadership to increase their knowledge of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and scriptures. And by doing this, this is one of the facets of education that is implemented in our missionary society, which is a very good thing. Now, Janice, you ran your mouth. What did you say that expires and how the missionaries expire as well as expand the future? They, uh, missionaries continue to facilitate growth in stewardship in the church through faith and spiritual guidance, which is very, very important. They continue to nurture the youth in their church and community through mentorship and le leadership uh, experiences. So, so like I said, it's now the stuff that they're based on doing, they have training for them because they are our future, so we have to implement this and put this in place for tomorrow. They continue to place much emphasis on sisterhood and by offering each other support through spiritual, intellectual, physical, and emotional by spreading the gospel. And once they have spread the gospel, they are connecting themselves closer with God. Missionaries continue to be strong, Courage, I mean, courageous, but most of all, continue to be encouraged. I hope I'm not, I wasn't too long-winded. I have one more thing, and I will sit down. Scanning the internet, uh, poems for the missionary. We journey on distant lands where love and hope, needing helping hands with every breath, we spread the light and guide the loss towards the right. Our mission clear our spirits bright. We stand for love, we stand for right. With every prayer and every deed, we serve the love, our greatest need. Thank you all. <laughs>